Hey everybody, Chris here from It's Mead Made, and today is all about the tools that you need to properly sand your resin 3D prints to get them ready for that beautiful paint job ahead of it. So after you've got your resin 3D prints all cured and beautiful and ready to paint, you first have to assemble it. And sometimes when you assemble it, those joints or sockets don't fit together too well and you've got to sand them down or process them. Or maybe you have some layer lines that you need to get rid of. It happens to all of us and we almost always have to process them in some form or fashion and sand them down to get them beautiful for that paint job. So today I'm going to go over all of my favorite tools and my must-have tools because it makes life a lot easier when you have the right tool for the right job. So the first thing is probably the most simplest and the thing that I guarantee every single person has and guess what? It's a paper towel. A paper towel is one of the most used tools when I'm processing my resin 3D prints and sanding them down. And all I do is I get it real wet and then I wring that thing out to where it is no more. It's just kind of a damp paper towel. You can also use a rag if you wanted to, but I find they just get really dirty and I hate cleaning them out, so I use a paper towel. And you use this to wipe down your resin 3D prints because once you start sanding, you'll get that white everywhere and it's hard to tell what you need to be sanding. And I'm always just taking it, I'll sand, 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 and take it and wipe it down. Now, this is not including if you're actually wet sanding, which brings me to number two. So number two is sandpaper. I know it's kind of obvious, but I use them for every single print that I'm processing. Now, you have to be careful because not all sandpapers are creative equally. And what I mean by that is some are for wet sanding, some are for dry sanding, and honestly, some are for both and you just need to check the back of your sandpaper. On the back of it, it will tell you if it's for wet sanding, dry sanding, or if it'll say wet or dry. And you see right here, it says wet and dry. I do do wet sand sometimes. I don't do it a whole lot unless I'm getting into like extreme grits. Like I'm talking like a thousand grit, or honestly like an 800 grit and keep going up. If I really want that surface to look like glass, then I'm doing a lot of wet sanding. Now you can do wet sanding on the lower levels, and it's just you basically spray your model get it wet and then you just start sanding it and that does keep down your dust so if you're concerned in an area that you don't have good ventilation wet sanding is a perfect alternative because it really minimizes the amount of dust that you produce because it's all wet but wet sanding is messy and you just want to make sure that you're in an area the where you can clean it up really well and not leave any of that behind i use contact paper and i just lay that down and then i'll sand on that and then i can just wipe it up or if it gets too bad i just throw it away and i cut some more off of the roll of my contact paper i use Number three is probably the most important thing that you can have when you're processing your resin 3D prints. And what that is, is a respirator. This is probably the most, no, I will say it is the most crucial thing when you are processing your resin 3D prints. When you're sanding this stuff down, you have to ensure that you're not breathing this stuff in. Resin is caustic, and if you're using gloves and being safe in its wet format, when it's airborne, it's the exact same thing. You should not be breathing this stuff in. And the one thing I will say, make sure you're using the right respirator. You need something that completely seals your face and at the right micron level. And I'm putting a link to all of these things down in the description. I'll show you the exact one that I use, but if you can find something with the same micron filter, you're gonna be just fine. The other thing I'll say, do not use one of those like COVID masks or don't use one of the white respirator masks because those are not good enough for you because they don't give you a proper seal and it does not filter the proper microns to where it's still coming through there. So just be careful of that. All right, so now number four. This one I use a lot on every single print and that is sanding twigs. So if you're unfamiliar with sanding twigs, that first off says you just haven't seen some of my other videos because I use these a lot. But what they are is essentially these little sticks and they have sandpaper on one side and then the other side and they come in different grits. These are just two packs. This is 320 and 100 grits. I have them that go all the way up to 400 and down to I think 60 grit 
and these are fantastic for getting into those little areas that you can't just you know fold a piece of sandpaper and get it in there now you can use these for wet i have noticed that these do fall apart a little bit after using excessive amounts with wet sanding but other than that, they work great. And I've got a bunch of them, so once they start falling apart, I can just throw it away and get another one. And the great thing about these is you can actually snip these. So like if you're just using the tip a lot, then you can snip that top off and then you've got a brand new end to keep going. So I will actually snip these all the way down to just like little twigs and then I'll throw them out to make sure I'm getting the most out of them. Another great use for these, if you have pegs that are fitting together, say it's an arm that's going to go into a shoulder and that peg is just a little too big and it's too tight of a fit, I take the lower grits, like the 60 or 80 grit, and I will just eat away at that peg, just on each side of it, and then that will help ensure that it has a nice fit to it. These things, uh, I don't know what I'd do without them. All right, real quick, I just wanna say thank you. Thank you to all of these amazing people supporting me on Patreon this month. If you want to be one of these amazing people, you will get exclusive access to all of my private Discord channels where we talk about painting, 3D printing, and everything else in between. But also being on my Patreon, you will get exclusive access from behind the scenes content, what I'm working on, and exclusive Patreon-only tutorial videos. And not to mention, my patrons also get to vote on some of the videos each month that I'm making for you guys. If you're interested in joining this awesome community, I'll have a link down below. Other than that, let's get back to this video. Now, number five. And number five is one of those things that I held out from getting a, for a long time. But then I started seeing Mike from Filament Fandoms actually start using these on his TikTok. And I was like, man, he's getting such amazing results, and I just had to get them. And now I just regret that I didn't get them sooner. And what that is, is sanding sponges. Sanding sponges are amazing. Now I have this set that I use, and I use these after I've used regular sandpaper. And the nice thing is, is you can go in order, and it really gets your prints looking like glass. Because I have fine, I have super fine, ultra fine, and then I have micro fine. And micro fine is fantastic because it gets that extra little gloss, and it's like a little buff to it because there's barely any sandpaper here. I don't know exactly what grits they are, but I know they're amazing, and for the final pass, these things are so great. I highly recommend getting some sanding sponges because these things are worth their weight in gold, which they're pretty light, so it's not that much gold, but still, worth it. Now the next thing I got because I kept seeing somebody else use it, the Creative Collector. He does awesome work, and I saw him use this Mr. Hobby, and he was recommending it, and I saw it at a convention, and I'm like, hmm, okay, it's time to get it. And this thing's fantastic. It's basically like an electric toothbrush. Yep. But do not use this on your teeth, I will tell you that. But this is the same thing as sanding sponges, essentially. It's got these little discs that you put on the tip of it, and then you just turn this thing on, and then you just kind of go in circles on there, and then this will get rid of any of those remaining supports that are still sticking up, or any layer lines. I love using this for layer lines because it's a focused area to keep sanding in one spot. And the one thing I'll tell you, you don't want to keep it in one spot when you've got it. I find it works really good when you're using it in little circles because it gets a nice smooth gradient of your sanding. But this thing is fantastic. A Mr. Hobby G-Tool. So seven and eight kind of go together because you can't use them without each other. And that is some precision grinding bits with a Dremel. Now a little Dremel is fantastic and me going to try to find the link to where you can get this exact one, I found out that this thing's on recall so I have to get rid of this. So I'll put a link in the description to the Dremel that you should get. So don't get this micro Dremel, but a Dremel is a Dremel. I like the small compact ones that are just battery operated because having a cord when you're doing it can get really annoying. But a Dremel is fantastic because you can use buff pads, you can use Scotch-Brite pads, but you can also use these precision grinding bits, which, ah, oh God, I out of the entire list, these are my favorite. So these grinding bits come in an array of different sizes that you can swap out easily. And what I love is these really sharp needle points. So the best thing that I use these things for is say if you have a hole and you have a socket that goes into it. So if we're back to that shoulder that we were talking about, some of those sharp corners 
will actually hold resin if you don't properly clean out all of that resin. And when you cure it, it rounds the corners, especially down deep in the corners, like where the flat surface meets, like right in there. But with that tip, you could start grinding out some of those corners that might have some excess resin that just cured in there. Now this is messy and it does kick up some dust. That's why I always recommend wearing a respirator. You have to have a respirator. Now the one bonus tip that I'm going to tell you, you definitely want to have proper ventilation. Y you need ventilation. Whether that's you're sanding outside or you're sanding by a window that's got a vent or a fan sucking out that dust, or even using a spray booth. When I'm really starting to kick up dust, I put everything over in my spray booth with my contact paper and turn on that ventilation so it's sucking out all of that dust. Ventilation is key. And the one thing you don't wanna do after you're done sanding and stuff, you're just, you've got your mask on, you're like, I'm all done, and then you take it off. But that's still in the air. So you want to make sure that it's ventilating out and you're not just ripping off your mask super fast because it could still be out in the air. So be careful. Safety, 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 safety. That's my number one concern with all of you. Always be safe. And speaking of safety, I also did not mention when you're wet sanding, use nitrile gloves. You don't want this stuff getting into your pores like if you've got cuts on your fingers or something like that. Using nitrile gloves is a lifesaver. It's just being safe and cautious. I would rather be way too cautious any day of the week than for something to happen, an accident, because we love this hobby. We want to keep enjoying this hobby. The last thing we want to do is have respiratory issues or even get like develop a rash or something like that, a hypersensitivity of resin, because we don't want to stop doing the hobby because it's too dangerous. It is dangerous, but if we're safe about everything we do, we're gonna be just fine. So those are my must-have tools. I use them for every single print that I'm processing. If you're interested in any of these, I'll go ahead and put my affiliate link down below. It helps me out and doesn't cost you a thing. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you all have a great day, and I will go ahead and see you guys in the next video.